Talk some bracketology. Welcome to CBS Sports bracketologist Jerry Palm and CBS Sports college basketball writer Kyle Boone. NC State upsets Duke in the ACC tournament quarterfinals. Uh, Wolfpack with three wins in three days, Jerry. What does this result mean for both NC State and for Duke? Well, for Duke, it means that they're probably going to drop a seed, at least in my bracket, for tomorrow. Of course, they could pop back up as other teams play around them. Uh, for NC State, it's just another step uh, toward a conference championship, which is what they will need to get into the NCAA tournament. Kyle, a projected three seed is what Duke uh, is getting from Jerry Palm. They were outscored in bench points 21 to nothing. What happened with Duke in this game? Yeah, it feels like Duke just doesn't quite have the the edge that maybe we've seen from previous Duke teams. They don't play with a ton of physicality. And they got pushed around a little bit against NC State, and that was a theme that we've seen kind of at the end of the season for Duke um, in the regular season finale against North Carolina. Is certainly um, two consecutive losses now for Duke uh, going into the NCAA tournament, both against teams from the Triangle. Um, it's going to be really, really difficult to, to kind of get off the mat here. They lost a lot of momentum um, going into the NCAA tournament and now heading in the wrong direction. And Jerry, this could have an impact on North Carolina not seeing the two seed in their own tournament. Yeah, right, because North Carolina is trying to chase a number one seed, and the path for them would involve beating the best teams they possibly can on the way to a conference championship, and now the the one team that's really anything near a peer to them in this league is out of the, out of the tournament. All right, so we wait and see what happens with NC State as they continue to win three wins in three days. NC State, of course, a big winner. Jerry, who's another big winner for you here on Thursday? Well, it's uh, St. John's. They won the big marquee double bubble game of the day. There were four, but this is the one with the, the two better teams in it. Uh, the last two teams in my bracket. Big win for St. John's over Seton Hall. It's now going to be a very nervous selection Sunday for Seton Hall, where St. John's gets to continue playing. They get a shot at UConn. Beat UConn, and you're definitely in. They could end up being in anyway, even if they don't beat UConn. Kyle, uh, when you look at, at what they were able to do on this day, St. John's. Uh, do you agree? Is that also your biggest winner? Are you taking it somewhere else? Yeah, I think I got to double up here. Um, certainly feels like St. John's was the biggest winner. Felt like a win and end situation for St. John's. Now, I don't, I'm not sure Jerry Palm is ready to go quite there yet. Um, I think a win against UConn would certainly do well for St. John's NCAA tournament hopes. But uh, the way that St. John's has played really the last month is really impressive. Um, they've now won six straight. Now They're now playing in the Big East semifinals round for the first time since 2000. Um, and this team is, is kind of playing and peaking at just the right time. This is what we expect uh, from Rick Pitino coach teams. And this St. John's team looked really dangerous right now. So you're not ready to put St. John's into the tournament yet. Is that what you're telling me? Well, there's other teams still playing. Right. So you, but know, you have not seen enough from their resume to get them in now after this win. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that night, uh, I mean, they could get their bid stolen. Yes. You know, there, there are bid stealers out there. Kyle, when you look at this St. John's team, and Jerry's not ready to, to put them into the big dance, and that's fine for argument's sake here. Are you putting St. John's into the NCAA tournament right now as we speak? I would put them in. Yeah, I, I think they've done enough over the last month to really push them over the top uh, of some of the other resumes that they're kind of battling against. Getting a win today over Seton Hall is huge. Um, you know, I, I think obviously getting the win is important, but getting a win specifically over Seton Hall, a team that is also on the bubble, um, it kind of elbows out some competition, so to speak. So um, we'll see. I, I think um, Palm is right to, to point out there could be some, some bid thieves kind of lurking out there. The A-10 uh, has certainly kind of un unfolded in a way that maybe we did not anticipate Participate. Uh, but I think right now the Johnnies have done enough. They should be dancing come Selection Sunday. Well, it's incredible to see what St. John's has done since Rick Pitino lashed out at his players, the facilities. He said it was uh, the most unenjoyable experience of my lifetime. That's what, that's what Rick Pitino said after they blew a 19-point lead to Seton Hall a month ago. They had a 19-point lead on this day. They did not blow it on this day. They have won six in a row since that, uh, I wouldn't call it a tirade, but I would call it a wake-up call to the team. Like, he, he named five different players that this player was too slow, this guy was slow laterally, this guy wasn't tough enough. I mean, you want to talk about, you know, absolute feedback from your coach, and he's giving it to the media. I mean, that's embarrassing. So you either look in the mirror, Jared, and you go, yeah, we need to step it up. Because I, be, I think that's basically what the Red Storm did here. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things where 
it could go either way, right? But it was already going the wrong way. So the downside wasn't really all that big because what's, what's it going to do? Get even worse? So, you know, it, it actually ended up working out for them pretty well. Uh, and they got hot at the right time because they needed to get hot if they were going to make the NCAA tournament and they may still need to get hotter. Well, he was asked uh, what they would need to beat UConn and tongue in cheek. He said he would need six of their players to get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that, he is a walking soundbite. He is an absolute walking soundbite. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Well, well yeah, we, we, of course, we hope that no one gets sick in the tournament. We don't want to see that. We had our entire tournament canceled because of COVID. Yeah, right. Don't remind me that when Dayton would have been the number one overall seed. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk about losers now. Jerry, who was the team that disappointed you on this day? Speaking of Dayton, um, it's the Dayton Flyers. You know, the, the A-10 went sideways today. All four top seeds lost today. But Dayton was a team that just short of a month ago, the committee was considering them for one of the top four seeds when they revealed their bracket. They were one of the other teams that had been considered. And then they've taken losses here in the league, not good losses in the league because there aren't a ton of good losses in the A-10, but they, they have played their way down. Now they're gonna be in the bottom half of the bracket. Uh, and this is a team that is just kind of, it's not really a huge slump. They're not losing consecutive games, but they're just not playing their best basketball as they enter the NCAA tournament. And Kyle, for you, your biggest loser. Yeah, we hit on them earlier. It's the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, Duke was the betting favorite to win the ACC coming into the ACC tournament. And they won zero ACC tournament games. Zero. They lost to NC State. Um, they looked totally soft. They looked out physical against a, a, an NC State team that they are way more talented than. Um, they'll enter the NCAA tournament com coming off consecutive losses to schools in the triangle. Obviously lost to North Carolina to close out the regular season. Lost to NC State today. No team has ever won a national championship after losing their first conference tournament game. Does not portend particularly well if you're a Duke Blue Devils fan. Yeah, I, I got some questions. I got some concerns about Duke, uh, especially when you get no points from your bench. Um, you got to figure out a way to get some points off your bench because you, know, you get a couple points off your bench and that game goes the other way in favor of Duke. Instead, it goes the way of the Wolfpack, their third win in three days. Uh, Jerry, a bevy of great games on Friday as we continue conference championship week. Uh, what's the game you're targeting? Uh, I'm looking at Ohio State and Illinois. I mean, Ohio State has come on strong since changing coaches. Jake Diebler has lost once in, I think, seven games. Yep. Yeah, on their way to the semi quarterfinals, I'm sorry, of the Big Ten tournament. And now they get a chance to beat the, the second best team in the league, the other top 16 team in the league, and a very athletic Illinois team that, that's, I think, peaking at kind of the right time and maybe dangerous in the NCAA tournament. But Ohio State can knock them off. Now they've got something to talk about in terms of an NCAA tournament case for them as an at-large team. Kyle, what conference tournament are you taking to us? Are you taking us to? Yeah, let's go to the Big 12. Kansas City, Texas Tech, Houston on Friday night is going to be popcorn theater. I'm really excited to watch that one. Uh, Texas Tech has won four straight. Uh, they killed BYU um, in, in, in the round today. Um, Texas Tech kind of demands your attention. They demand your respect. They play really physical. They play really good defense. Uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup against Houston, who, as we know, uh, projected number one seed, uh, one of the best teams in college basketball, but a little bit injured going into the postseason. I think Texas Tech has a chance to make this one really interesting. And Houston, I think people are probably just penciling them in to go to the Big 12 tournament title game this could be a trap spot for them so i think this will end up being a good matchup in the big 12 texas tech houston on friday night well for whatever it's worth houston beat texas tech by 23 back in yep. january but uh, it's different when you talk about conference tournaments because anything can happen and that's what we saw on thursday and perhaps we'll see some crazy and some chaos ensue on friday kyle boone jerry palm here on cbs sports hq men thank you and of course we'll have you covered on selection sunday as soon as the brackets come out we'll be breaking down the matchups jerry palm will be delivering his final bracketology for us as we talk about the last four and first four out which teams will make the big dance Rick Pitino looking to take a sixth different team to the NCAA tournament he would be the first coach ever to do so as he tries to take St. John's to the NCAA tournament we'll have you covered here on CBS Sports HQ wall-to-wall -wall coverage keep it locked